What's up? We're here with another episode of the List My Products e-commerce podcast. Today I'm joined by Thad Jones. Thad, how are you doing today? I'm good, Alex. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Rock solid. Excited to have you. Thad was with Vertex, um, and, and, and he was telling me a little bit about his time starting out as a print broker. So a lot of the businesses that uh, are listening, you know, we help the, the small businesses who are kind of left out of the e-commerce revolution, just getting their products online. And for someone like that who started in traditional, uh, you know, media buying, you know, billboards, a lot of the, the traditional items, I'd love to hear how you went from, you know, traditional media avenues today working in the digital marketing space with over 70 customers. I mean, really, it's been a, a true evolution. Uh, you know, I've, I've been doing some form of marketing since 97. And as you can imagine, without any real internet to speak of, I mean, it was print, advertising, print. I was a print broker. So went into dental marketing eventually. I spent about six years doing dental marketing. And that was kind of where I had my first crossover from traditional into online because we had an online-based marketing system specifically for dentists. But really what took me into this field was my, my eldest son. Um, he's a very technical young man and understood websites, he builds websites, um, started the, the early, you know, grasping SEO and uh, basically everything that go goes into SEO, uh, which involves social media. And he it was a, it's the typical father-son experience, dad, you, you better step up and figure this out or you're gonna get left behind. So that, that's primarily how it evolved from a print broker, dental marketing that was online. And then my son kind of, uh, actually taught me the business that I'm in now, just with his general knowledge. Wow. So you, you know, self-taught almost SEO. And uh, if you take a look at Vertex, and we'll link it in the description below, um, really great blog content. I know your wife helps you there. I was reading through some of her stuff. Um, right. and, and seriously, uh, it was really quality stuff. Thank you. you. You know, when you have, uh, when you're going from zero to 70 or so customers, obviously, you know, that's going to take a lot of time, right? And I know that experience, not just sales, but fulfillment, you know, having this type of customer base, this large group, you know, what are you seeing as trends? Um, you know, are you still producing the same, you know, obviously SEO services, or is it becoming more uh, unique and, you know, um, hyper-personalized to each customer as you go along? Well, it, it's kind of a paradox, really, because one of the things that I really value or I, I love about doing this is I, I take every client that I work with uh, and I really get to know their business. I, I, I live and die with their success based on what I'm doing. And so when I take on a new client, it doesn't just stop there. I'm not done with them. That's when the real work begins. Um, I get to know them. I learn everything about them. I try and, I mean, I've met them at diners just to help them learn social media. I mean, I really want them to succeed. And then on the flip side, that creates the bottleneck effect. You know, I mean, obviously now that we're up around 70 uh, clients and that involves a multitude. We have, we, some are just websites that we host and we designed. Uh, we do social media posts for our clients and then we also do SEO. And for anyone who does this or has attempted to do it, they know that it's very time consuming. Um, and then I act as kind of the salesperson and then also the project manager. And I, I've learned to delegate a lot better than maybe I used to. But the, the problem is, is the more customers I have, the less time I have to grow the business because I give such personal attention to each client. And really for me, I'm, I'm right now in the process of converting myself into from a bowl, which is, you know, a bowl of being a, of customers and eventually it overfills and then what do you do, right? So I'm, I'm trying to convert myself from being that bowl to a funnel. So that I can just funnel them, maybe bring on some uh, assist, you know, someone to assist me with managing and supporting the existing clients that we have, so that I can just be the funnel, and which will make it so that there's no limits to the amount of sales that I can produce. Because I, I, one thing I've learned is you have to focus on your strengths, and as an entrepreneur, sometimes it's hard to let go of all the different facets because you believe that you're better at it than anyone else can be, just because you care so much. As you start bringing on really good people, you find that's not necessarily true. Like you mentioned, my wife who does the social media, does it 10 times better than I ever could. Our web developer. Make sure I she could, hears you say that too. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't go to waste. 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so it really is important to accept that, you know, I can't do everything and that that's not best for our business. And um, so that, that's been probably the biggest challenge that I've had is letting go of all these different projects and, and kind of just being the funnel to, to provide the work for everybody else. I can understand that a lot, especially yeah. as a personalize it, you know, with this business, you know, stickiness has been an issue, right? Um, a lot of our customers will stay two to three months just because, you know, we're listing their products online. You know, and after you hit all their inventory, it's, you know, you got to get new customers. You know, for you in the SEO space, obviously, you know, you want to have unlimited keywords and unlimited, you know, um, you know, top rankings. But, you know, how has stickiness been involved in your revenue or in your business model? You know, obviously, it sounds like your customers have stayed with you a while. And I'll be truthful. Some of my customers stayed with me for a while. But, you know, we might have a different service for them just because they and I have, are so good together, right? Or we right. I help them with things that might be outside of the scope of a typical, but, you know, you build relationships. Sure, absolutely. I mean, that, that's one of the great things about this business is that if you do it right, there's a strong residual component. You know, if we get someone, obviously, that we're hosting their website, that just becomes a fabric of their business that they never let go. So, I mean, we've had customers since we opened our doors that are still with us today and a lot of times that evolves into the seo side of it we can help you with the social media we do ppc as well or pay-per-click and um it, it's still it, it i never like to lose clients our retention is actually really good um and i think it's because i gave them that personal service and i, I when i did start noticing that you know our, our churn rate went to about three percent which to me it kills me which is a lot of people say oh, that's pretty good. Um, so I notice as I, I've ramped up my sales approach, um, my churn rate went up a little bit. So that's why I, I felt I had to do some things differently. I, I want people to still have that personal attention that has made us a, a real, a real st stable in our growth. You know, because uh, if you're high, if you're bringing on ten or twenty new clients a month and losing fifteen, that's not a formula for success. So really, it's all about retention, and um, we've been very, very uh, strong with our retention to this point. So, I hoping to hear that. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, retention speaks to high quality service. Period. Yeah, and you know, a lot of it too is you know SEO. It isn't you know a lot of people. I, I explain to my clients I, that that's one thing I, I take a lot of pride in. I, I I make sure they understand exactly what they're getting into. You know, SEO. I tell them, I go, this isn't advertising. Even social media isn't advertising. Sure, you can boost it. You can do display ads on Facebook, LinkedIn, what have you. But social media, SEO, those are things that you do just to kind of keep the lights on. You know, you have to do it to build credibility, the social signals for Google, so on and so forth. But SEO is the kind of thing where it, it's a tough sell and it's becoming more complicated now because everybody is involved. Everyone is, you know, learning about SEO and there's a lot more people doing it. So it's, it's a process to get someone ranked on the first page of Google. And um, you have to explain that up front. Otherwise, they're going to be calling you, hey, why aren't I there yet? Um, same with social media. It's one of those things where if you start a new Facebook page and really there, there's no, you don't have any followers, you can post 100 times a day and no one's going to see it. Um, so you have to have valuable content. You do have to do some boosting. Um, you have to do some engagement, interaction with other, you know, Facebook users. Um, it's a very, very involved thing. You have to join groups. And a lot, you know, we can help you with the social posts, but there is a, a, a side of it where the business owner has to understand that they have to be involved as well. And, and trying to create that delicate balance at the right price points it's a challenge because there's so much competition and it ranges from, you know, people are doing it for $50 up to a thousand dollars for social media, you know? So you find a price point that makes sense for you and the services that you offer and, and you go from there. Absolutely. And, you know, from experience your relationship equals runway SEO takes time, right? Evergreen marketing takes time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, you know, um, a lot of business owners are becoming more savvy, right? A couple years when I started this, People were kind of aware, like I need to list my stuff online, pandemic, everyone wants to list their stuff online. So that's been really, you know, useful, right? Right. Um, 
SEO. People a few years ago, five, six, 10 years ago, I don't know. Now they know they need that, right? They know they have to have it. Right. You know, what are some trends or what are some things you're seeing from your customers, um, you know, currently that um, you're just starting to maybe read into those trends or you're noticing? I'm finding that more people are calling me and inquiring about SEO as opposed to in the past. It was more about me saying, hey, who's doing your SEO? And they say, what's that? I say search engine optimization. They go, what's that? So I, I'm not having to coach and teach people as much. Sure, I have to kind of explain what's in, you know, kind of involved in that, you know, strong content, um, link building, uh, you know, there's, and that's ever evolving. You know, sometimes you, you watch some of these people are on YouTube saying, oh, link building is, you don't need to do it. Um, I, I believe in doing a little bit of everything. I don't believe that in, in any form of advertising that there is a holy grail. That's the reason why you may see an attorney on billboards, on TV, you know, doing social media. They do everything because they know that they have to. They have the budget to do it. But also on the same, on the flip side of that, the internet has given the smaller business an opportunity to, you know, uh, show up on the same playing field, which they ne couldn't necessarily do before. So there's advantages and disadvantages. You know, now you have some of these bigger companies who are just outspending everybody else. Um, and then a lot of it is product based. You know, I have a lot of clients that come to me and they want to sell a $10 item on an e-commerce website that we build for them. And the problem is, is you have to have a budget to advertise that and they want to do it for $250 a month. And you can't um, because, you, you know, the truth is if they're not spending 30 to $50 minimum, they're not even going to get enough exposure. And then on the flip side of that, I always feel kind of, uh, you know, I don't like spending other people's money if I don't think it can do something for them. Yeah. And you know, it's going to work until it does or doesn't, you know? Right, right. And then how, to what degree does it have to work? You know, if they're sending, selling an item where they make a $10 profit, they have to sell a thousand of those just to pay for the ads that they're doing. So there, there's a couple of challenges that you have to deal with. And you, I don't like to talk myself out of business. But sometimes I just can't take a client's money if I know that it's not going to do anything for them. So <laughs> kind of that moral dilemma, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm in business to, to grow what we do. And so, so a lot of times I will kind of, in a way, backsell our services. And I'll tell you, know, someone will come say, I want to do some PPC. And, you know, and how much do I need? They want to spend a thousand. I said, well, for your particular product, you need to be spending a hundred dollars a day. And they're like, Oh, wow. And I, and I know that they don't have it if they're an upstart business. And I'll say, you know, maybe we need to start just with some social media, um, get your name out there, brand, start doing a little branding, um, do some SEO, which is going to cut, you know, benefit you down the road, which is always a tough sell. Uh, maybe you can do some display ads, which is kind of a digital billboard, so to speak. It's cheaper than search ads. So I try and help them see a, a path to where they want to be, but sometimes they don't have the money to get there because it, it's an investment. Uh, you're not going to see an ROI uh, right off the bat, even if you're doing PPC nowadays, unless you have a huge, enormous budget. So that's, that's a big challenge for us and businesses. Yes, yes, yes. And so I, to add to that, do you mind describing to my audience who your ideal client would be? If this was a beacon to say, hey, I'm listening to this. Now, who should, um, not say you would turn anyone away, obviously, mm -hmm. but you might, you know, if they're not a good fit, you know, who should reach out to you and say, you know, I, I've got this and I'd like to do this? Uh, the service industry. You know, there's a huge need, obviously, in the service industry in whatever market you're in. And that could be air conditioning. That could be landscapers, carpet cleaners, things of that because there's a lot of people searching for those services readily. Um, I, I've worked with a variety of different attorneys. Um, one is personal injury, for example. Another one is probate. Personal injury literally is about a $500 a day budget on PPC to show up with the big boys in the community. Um, whereas a probate lawyer, you could probably get away with maybe $70 to $100 because there's not as much of a demand for it. Um, $100 a day yeah. marketing, man. <laughs> Say that again. Five hundred dollars a day. I've heard. I know that's expensive uh, for the personal industry, but man, is that is that really the average you're seeing? 
Well, here's how that works. You know, it, they don't have to spend 500, but yeah. each keyword that they're going after accidents, uh, personal injury attorney, those are sometimes 50, 60, $70 a click because of the demand. Whereas I can get probate and divorce attorneys and you get that in the eight to $10, eight to $12 range per click. Yeah. So it's, it's sure, you know, and, and the thing is, is it's a volume business. You know, you have to have a lot of people drive a lot of people to your website to get some that stick. Right. And so do they have to spend 500? No, but to be up on the first page of Google consistently when people are searching for the services that they offer, uh, it's, that's the kind of budget that they're competing against, you know, some of the bigger players. So if I get a newer attorney, that's kind of a shock to the system. Um, so, but always the service industry has always been really strong for me, obviously a big ticket industry, you know, a pool contractor, if he gets one client, it pays for his ads for three, four months. Um, same with a probate attorney, you know, he could get a, a probate case that pays for his ads for a couple of months. Uh, personal injury is the same way. I um, spoke to one guy, I didn't interrupt, but I spoke to this guy in San Francisco a little while ago who is um, an attorney for uh, apartments. He was like landlord tenant attorney. Man, that could, yeah, yeah. One of those, one of those cases, it all sustained for almost a year, right? Yeah, whole budget. absolutely. Um, you know, you, you have people who do air conditioning. You know, if you replace three AC units on a, on a home or a commercial property, I mean, that's invaluable. I mean, being, uh, I've been told that being on the first page of Google for an AC company, it could be worth a million dollars a year if you're there consistently, always. And, and you usually see it. There's big players in, in, in our community in, in Las Vegas, which is where we are. And they're everywhere. They're, they have branded vehicles all over town. They have billboards. They do TV. They do radio. They do tons of online marketing. And that's because it's making them a, a much greater return than what they're spending. Uh, so it, it really, it's one of those things where when you, to compete with that industry in an industry like that requires you to spend some money, but the return is, is worth it generally. Uh, you know, when you, when you get someone to spend a life savings to do that though, it, you know, I, I feel conscious about that because I, I really want it to work. Um, so, but yeah, service industry is great. Um, attorneys are great as far as we're concerned. Um, we also do a lot of home businesses. You know, we, we have a lot of people who want us to build e-commerce websites. You know, a lot of people are working home after the pandemic and they're all looking for every opportunity to start their own business and not have to go back to work for someone else. And so I've seen a lot of upstart selling a variety of, of products that I didn't even know existed on, on the internet. So that, that's kind of What's the crazy one that's you know appropriate to say on this uh, medium? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I met, I worked with someone who was selling, uh, children's, uh, games, um, basically school games to help them learn educational games. And it was a, one of those challenging products, you know, his profit margins were very small. Um, but I really liked him, really wanted to help him. So we started out with some social media, but he's dealing with the giants of the gaming and, you know, the Hasbro's, Mattel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, so I, I, you know, I try and explain it to him and, and he, he is really not always about the product, you know, his product, he had a great product. He was, he was really excited about it. He really believed in it and he was a teacher. So he had put it into play and seen it work, but converting a great idea or a great product into revenue is, is one of the hardest things anyone can do. So, so many things can go wrong. You got to capture your list. You got to be able to position to even have someone opt in. You got to, you know, remarket so much. And so that's yeah. why people need to work with you, right? So how can people reach out to you um, with Vertex and, you know, um, and, and just see if they're a good fit? Uh, we have a website. It's uh, vertexvisibility.com. Vertex is a synonym for peak. Uh, and and it, it, it's just... We have a lot of things on there that we do. We do, you know, you can go on there and take a look at some of our social media posts. We have a portfolio for that, some of our websites. Um, but really that's the easiest access point for someone watching this. I take all the calls that come in uh, personally and uh, I, I love to talk shop, you know, the, much the same way we're having a conversation now. 
is just about every conversation I have with a potential client is exactly like this. And I really go into depth and I, I talk about their product. I want to learn as much as I can about it so that I can help them be successful with it. And so I mean, my, most of my sales calls are, can be 30 minutes to an hour if I get someone who's equally as chatty as I am. Oh, wow. Uh, I, uh, I think my audience is going to enjoy this one. Well, Dad, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, my pleasure. You dropped a lot of knowledge on our people here. So without further ado, uh, this concludes the episode of List My Products e-commerce podcast. Till next time. Great. Thanks, Alex.